Today's subscriber is Denisa Rivera, and she sent in her candles again a while back, and I'm finally getting to them. And so appreciate your patience on that. And thank you all for being here to watch these reviews. I'm glad you enjoy them and I will keep doing them as long as you do. I think it's a great opportunity to learn from one another, see what people are using as far as their products go, do some testing and to get some feedback from, from someone else that's been in the industry a while. And thank you all for supporting one another in the community as well. I love this channel, I love the community, so appreciate all of you. Let's get into today's review. We're gonna unbox this, we're gonna take a look at the, the, the jars, the wicks, the wax, the label, everything we can see visually. And then um, I'm going to then test these candles and you won't even know I'm gone right here in the same video. We'll talk about how they test it. I'll show some footage of the testing, talk about how they perform, talk about the wicks, the sizing and all of that. So I hope you guys learned something out of these videos as well, just enjoy watching them. All right, before we get to anything in the box, it looks like we've got a before and after envelope, which if you're new to these reviews, we will open the before one now and read any information the maker wants to share with us up front. And then throughout the process of reviewing and testing these, I will make some guesses on the types of materials being used, like the wick and the wax and so on. And then at the very end, I'll open the after and we get to see if I was right or wrong or how close I was. And sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm not, but it's fun either way. So let's go ahead and get everything out and then we will get started. Alrighty, so it looks like we got a couple products here, but before we do anything else, let's set the after letter aside and let's open this before letter. Now I kind of read these to myself real quick, just in case there's any information they don't want to share. Well, the letter's just saying that uh, thank you for reviewing her candles and that the channels helped provide them a little bit of confidence to get going and get started. Um, and then she says, P.S. We are still trying to develop our labels and they're still kind of on the fence about which label they want to go with. This is a great opportunity for me to mention something real quickly, like that I like to do each one of these review videos. And that is a reminder that all candle makers are at different stages. Some have been doing this for a while. They're running the businesses and they just want some feedback on like a new line of candles to test some wicks, uh, talk about fragrances, that kind of stuff, or just do it for fun. And then others are brand new, like they're just getting started and they're wanting a little feedback along the way to kind of get them in the right direction. Others are somewhere in the middle, like it sounds like Denisa is. They've got some products, they're fairly confident with them, but they're not really done with branding or anything like that. So the point of these videos is really just to help if I can. So whatever they sent is what we will talk about and review, um, but just keep in mind that everyone's at a different stage in their candle making. All right, let's start with this little one. I really need to start bringing scissors with me when I do these reviews. Well, I can certainly smell it. Oh my gosh, I'm pretty sure that's a licorice. Watch me be way wrong. All right, some of you are probably like, what, licorice? but it does have like a little bit of a licorice smell. It's called Love Noir. All right, cute, small, little votive candle, and it has a wooden wick. I've never seen a wooden wick in a votive candle, like ever, but first time for everything. Now I said a votive, but it's really more like a tiny container candle. Votives typically are like standalone candles that pop out and can be placed in little dishes. This is like a votive size, but it's technically a container candle. It's in a little amber shot glass, cool. Not my particular type of fragrance that I really like, but again, that's more of a preference. All right, so let's talk about the candle itself. The wax is definitely soy-based. Um, you can see a tiny bit of frosting, a little bit on the top. It has a little bit of a soy feel where it is soft yet textured. And you can see that kind of chalkiness look around the outside, around the edges. So definitely seems like a soy candle. If I had to guess, I would say, I don't think it's golden wax 464, but it could be. Um, I would lead more towards 444 or even like a C3 wax. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. This is a wooden wick and I don't know the entire, I don't know the exact size of this. If you get the wooden wick straight from the manufacturer, which is wooden wick company recently changed their name to make C, then they have very specific sizes and, and names for each of their wicks. But some people buy their wicks from like a, a supplier distributor that usually then gets those from make C, the manufacturer but they'll rename the sizing. So I, I don't, for example, there's some suppliers that just call their wooden wicks like small, medium, and large. Well, that's not super helpful um, because if you get them from the manufacturer, they have like specific measurements, like a 0 0.03 thickness and a half inch wide or a booster wick or something like that, where these other suppliers, you don't really know. So I might not be using the right terminology measurements. I would say this is a 0 0.03 or 0 0.04 thickness and a half inch wide if that's helpful. All right, I'm gonna set that one aside. Next up, and first of all, both these boxes had little stickers to cover the where you open it up. So great little touch, especially for someone just getting started. A lot of people don't start with something like that right off the bat. So I don't even use those all the time, still. Really like the label on this one too. Um, it is a band label that has kind of a foiled look to it. Really, really neat. It says Zesty Evenings, seven ounce candle. Oh, well, I wasn't expecting that. That's a really cool top there. It has some little leaf embeds on top. 
and then it has a little bit of a dust, like a gold mica dust on top. Very small amount, just enough to give it a little decoration, but not enough to like really fill up the wax and clog a wick. This is okay. This is the kind of mica that if you're going to use, I would prefer like this amount or this type of use of the mica. Whereas a lot of people will mix it in the wax and there's just so much in there. Sometimes it can cause some wicking issues. So I think this is very nicely done. I'm picking up some bergamot. It says zesty evenings. Zesty makes me think lemon. All right. I said bergamot. I'm thinking more like lemongrass now. Uh, but it, the, the, the leaves with the gold mic has kind of thrown me off. So there must be something else in there. Uh, but I'm mostly... But I'm mostly smelling like a lemon or a bergamot, which I really, really like. So definitely my favorite fragrance of the two. This one also has a wood wick in it. Um, it is one that has a booster wick. It looks to be about uh, 5 eighths inch wide or 3 quarters inch wide, 0 0.04 thickness. And it has a little booster strip in the middle. These little booster wicks can be hard sometimes to see in the camera. Hopefully you can see that extra little piece of strip of wood right in the middle of the wick that's attached. Point of that is to generate a little bit more heat and flame right in the center. It provides more fuel to the flame. It, it, it really, some waxes, some candles need that if it's a hard to burn wax. Soy waxes, for example, or waxes with a really high melt point or like beeswax really needs that extra boost, uh, which is why it's called a booster wick. Now, being perfectly honest, both of these to me seem like the wick is gonna be too much. But I've said that before and was wrong and the wick ended up being perfect. And so I don't really know till we test it. And, and that's the reason we do these tests, right? But just kind of visually looking at the size of the candle and the size of the wick and knowing how thick the wick is, they seem to be a little bit too much, but only time will tell. We will test to find out. And I hope that I'm wrong. Um, as far as the wax goes, I am going to stick with my guess of like a 444 um, from Golden Wax or like a C3. I, is that the one? There's C3 and C6. One of them has coconut. I always mix up the two. So I told you my guess or guesses on the wax, the size of the wicks, um, and then the fragrance on this one, I'm going to stick with some kind of lemon or bergamot fragrance. All right, so don't go anywhere. I'm gonna test these real quick and I'll be right back and we'll talk about how they test it. While I'm doing that, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel below if you're interested in anything else about candle making or running a business, as well as if you enjoy these type of videos, let me know by giving it a like below as well. I'll be right back. Here we are several days later and we've got a couple different candles to talk about and kind of break down here as far as how they tested and how they performed. But before we get into that, I wanna take a minute to thank the sponsor of this portion of today's video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is a great place to learn new skills, improve upon your current skills, or just find some inspiration. I can't tell you how many classes I've taken over time through Skillshare, but it's been a lot. As the CEO or chief everything officer of my small business, and I'm sure you can relate, that means I'm in charge of handcrafting my products, managing my operations, managing my inventory, sometimes bookkeeping, doing my own marketing, being a salesperson, really a little bit of everything. Oh, and of course, product photography and even planning the budget. So if you are in the same boat and you're a small business owner yourself, you may want to check out Skillshare as well. You'll have unlimited access to all their classes of all different kinds. And for those of you that are looking to start an Etsy shop or just expand upon your current one, I came across a recent class worth checking out called Etsy Launch, How to Open an Etsy Shop Like a Professional Seller by Tiffany Emery. She talks about setting up the shop, launching, customer engagement, she gets into Etsy algorithm and so on. I know many of you also use Skillshare and really enjoy it. For anyone else that is interested, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Thank you for indulging me for a moment and let's talk about how these candles test it. We're gonna start with that small kind of votive size candle, which is the amber shot glass. Unfortunately for this one, it was a pretty quick test. This one was very, very overwicked from the get go. So a lot of times I will find out a candle is overwicked once we kind of get further down in the jar. This one was very, very evident from the very beginning. And uh, after a couple tests, I really couldn't continue much with it. It was just too overwicked. I'm not entirely sure till we get to the uh, letter at the end of the video here, what size we're working with. But I think I mentioned that it was a pretty large wick. At least it seemed like it was going to be for me. But I also mentioned that I didn't know entirely what exactly the wood wick was. It wasn't like one that I had recognized from Makesy. It looks like maybe it was sold from a third party or even Amazon, for example. So I don't really know exactly the type or size of wood wick, but all I do know is that it was too much for this particular vessel. If you wanna stick with the type of wick this is, 
I would go like at least in half as far as the size. Otherwise, you might want to get your wood wicks from Makesy, which I believe your other one probably came from. It looks like a Makesy wood wick. And I would maybe go that route just so you can have some consistency and it'll be a little easier to get to get some guidance and help on, on trying to narrow down the right wick. Now, the hot throw on this one was also sort of an issue, but at the same time, it is a very small candle, more like a little sample. It's not really meant to be used in like a living room or a kitchen or even a small bedroom. It's just too small for that. So that's part of the reason it's not going to have a lot of hot throw. So if you keep that in mind, and changes your perspective of how you're evaluating the scent. So in a small little bathroom, like a half bath or something, I think it would be completely fine. But overall, I would say the scent was a little weak on this one, even, even for kind of a smaller size candle. With all that being said, there is some positive things about this little candle as well. First of all, I like the concept a lot. I really enjoyed the look of the kind of amber shot glass, and I think it would make a great sample or like little bonus kind of gifts so if someone orders X amount of candles, you maybe throw one of these in for free, for example, something like that. And if you're not opposed to using some cotton wicks, I think that might be better for this particular type of candle, especially it being smaller. You might want to give that a shot as well. If you do want to stick with the wood wicks, then definitely just work on wicking down until you find that right size. Lastly about that candle was the fragrance itself. Uh, so I wasn't particularly drawn uh, to that fragrance, which is more of a personal preference. This one I'm picking up a little bit of cherry, uh, which is not a bad thing. I don't mind the cherry, but there's some other notes in there as well, and I don't really know exactly what it is, but the combination, it's just a personal preference, but it's, it's not my favorite of the two. Now, conversely, if we move to the second candle, that was the larger one that also had a wood wick in it, had a booster wood wick in it. This one is the one called Zesty Evenings. Now, I am more partial to this fragrance uh, for a couple reasons. One, I just happen to like a lot of lemon and bergamot type fragrances, and that's what it smells like to me. Um, there's probably some other notes involved as well, but that's mostly what I'm picking up. The other one is probably considered more upscale and a little bit more complex, but just personal preference, just as a, as a user or a consumer of candles, I prefer this larger one called Zesty Evenings. And then this one also burned really well too. So this one started off perfectly, great flame, no issues. It, it, it got mostly to the edges on that first burn. It was doing a really, really good job. Then there were a couple times where the wood wick kind of got a little weaker, never really went out or, or really had a chance of going out, but definitely a little weaker. But that is really, really normal for wood wicks. They're very inconsistent. You can have some burns that are perfect, some that are crazy, uh, like where the flame is too high, others where it looks like it's going to drown out. And so you just kind of have to First of all, embrace the fact that they're a little inconsistent and just be okay with that. And what you're looking for is just an overall good performing candle top to bottom. Started off great, parts of it got kind of a weaker flame, but you never really lost the performance. It, it kept a good melt pool and the flame was still manageable the whole time. And then it would finally improve again. And by the end of the candle, it had burned great pretty much the whole time. In fact, I even did like an eight or 10 hour power burn one day, once uh, once I got like halfway down the jar. And even after that long, yes, the flame got a little larger and it's not something you would want to do. You, you would want to trim it before you let it go that long. But even after 10 hours, it was still like, okay. Especially knowing that was a power burn, it was still doing pretty well. Long story short, this one was wicked, I think very well. And I'm not sure I would change anything. I think you probably got that one nailed perfectly. Um, and then, like I said, the fragrance on this one is better as well. It wasn't overwhelming on the hot throw, but I don't think that's the fragrance issue. I think the fragrance itself is nice um, and, I, and I did enjoy it and it was there. It just wasn't overpowering and it definitely was suited better for a small room, I'd say. It didn't do very well in an open living room or a kitchen, but it did well in a bedroom. Now, part of that is, and again, we'll find out when we get to that letter, it's probably more to do with the wax that is being used. I feel like this is definitely a soy coconut blend. Um, I believe I said in the, in the first video that it's probably a C6. Um, I think that's the one that's uh, coconut soy. I'm not entirely sure if it's that manufacturer, but uh, that's the type of wax it reminds me of. Those waxes are known not to always be the strongest as far as hot, hot throw. You can get really good hot throw with them if you choose the right oils and you, they're wicked properly, but sometimes you can do everything right and the oil just doesn't perform well with that kind of wax. And if that happens, you just kind of get underwhelming hot throw. And I think that's what was happening here because this size jar with a wood wick and with a citrus fragrance, I would expect a little bit more hot throw from this one. And I would say it was below average, but we're gonna talk about that a little bit more as soon as we get to this letter and find out exactly what materials we're using. The last thing I wanna talk about is the orange mica that was on top of the embeds on the surface of that candle. It was done very, very well. I'm not a huge fan of putting a lot of extra elements in your candle, um, both just because I like more of a simple look, but also a lot of them are just not necessarily safe to use or they can cause performance issues. Well, this was a, a small amount of mica and definitely no issues with using that whatsoever. So I think it was done really well and it was done in good proportion and it looked really, really nice. When the candle was burning, 
Hopefully the camera footage will show it, but you were actually getting some sparkles and glistening as it was uh, kind of melting and you were getting little swirls. Looked really cool. Not that customers stand over their candles and watch them while they're melting, but regardless, it looked good. So very, very good job on this candle overall. Okay, so we made some guesses earlier uh, on the type of wicks and I'm thinking the wax is like a C6 wax, coconut soy. We know the one wick I believe is from Makesy. And I think it was a 0 0.03, probably with a booster wick, and probably about 5 eighths or 3 quarters inch wide. The other one is not a Makesy wick. I don't know where it's from, but hopefully we find out. All right, let's get to that after letter and see how close we are on our guesses and try to learn a little bit more about the products. Hi Wade, AKA Black Tie Bar. Here's what is in our candles. So the larger candle, Zesty Evenings, is uh, GB454 Coconut Soy. All right, so I was right on the coconut soy. 454 is made by Golden Brands, whereas C6 is actually made by Cargill. Again, hopefully I'm getting those right. They're C3 and C6. One is all soy, one is coconut soy. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on it recently, but I don't use very much of either one of those waxes, so that's probably why. But I'm pretty positive C6 is the coconut soy. Anyways, the wick is in fact a Crackling Booster 0.03, three quarters of an inch, so we got the wick 100% right on that, uh, the larger Zesty Evenings candle. And like I said, that one burned great. I don't know that I would change anything other than the hot throw was kind of average at best, maybe a little below average. And then the Amber Votive, she says she actually does use in their sample sets. So I think the concept is great. I think the approach for that is, is very well done. The wax is also GB454 Coconut Soy. And the wick, yes, the wick just says from Amazon. So that's the issue why I couldn't figure out what that one was. You could tell it was different. And it is also why I couldn't figure out the sizing. It just burned different too. It like chars differently. It's just a whole different kind of wick uh, than the, the ones from Makesy. So. If I were you, I would probably go to make to get your wooden wicks. And the reason is, is you'll get more ability to try to size them appropriately. You're going to get more guidance on that. You'll always know who the manufacturer and the seller is. When you're getting from Amazon, you don't really know what you're getting. Oh, I forgot to talk about the fragrances. On the first one, Zesty Evenings was in fact mostly lemon. Lemon pound cake, lemon, and lemon verbena, and a little bit of musk. Yep, I think that describes it perfectly. Um, and then the fragrance oil on the small one was Black Cherry Malo. Uh, a little bit of absinthe, some black licorice, amaretto, and violet. Yeah, so a lot of, other than the violet, a lot of fragrances that are not my personal favorites, which is why I tend to prefer the other one. So I think we did pretty good out of the guesses there. And I know you're probably hoping for a more like hard answer and like, what can I do to improve the hot throw? Unfortunately, like I described, 454 isn't necessarily known for really good hot throw. Again, I'm not trying to say you can't get good hot throw with it, but sometimes it can be more difficult. It's really about finding fragrance oils that are compatible and do well with that wax. And you just don't know that until you do some testing. So with that in mind, just be really diligent and picky about your fragrance oils and make sure they are performing how you want before you settle on one. So that, that will require some patience and some, and some practice and experimenting with different oils. And then the last thing she put on this letter was, P.S. Keep bringing Alan on board, LOL. <laughs> it's funny, Alan gets a lot of love on this, on this channel. If you guys are fairly new or don't know who Alan is, that's just another one of the alter egos that I use here on the channel sometimes. He's been in several videos. In fact, there's another video that's got like eight characters in it. If you just want to have fun and laugh one evening for a bit, you can check that out. Anyways, thanks Denisa for sending in your candles and trusting me with a little bit of feedback here. I appreciate you for being a subscriber on the channel as well as the rest of you. And I hope you continue to enjoy these type of videos. Also, question of the day. Let me know in the comments if you prefer wood wicks like we talked about today or cotton wicks and why. Don't forget to check out Skillshare in the description below. The first thousand people to use that link will get one free month trial to Skillshare. Thank you all for being here and I'll see you all next time.